everybody, I'm Greg Sussman inside Studio 34, and today it's going to be a fun show because with just two games on the NBA slate, not only are we going to give you some top plays, some value plays, well, we're going to pick the games tonight from a betting standpoint as well. For the DFS part of it, we're joined by Drew Digmeyer of DailyRoto.com. What's going on, Drew? Just two games, so a little bit of a, a shortened uh, slate of options to choose from, but we'll do our best to guide people in the right direction here. Let's start out with some of the top plays on the board, Drew. We'll start in Oklahoma City with Paul George, who returned from injury earlier this week and played a full complement of minutes. Played a full complement of minutes. Also took 25 shots, so no concerns about his health uh, going forward. He was he was an ample and willing shooter in that first game back. And the matchup tonight is pretty good. Portland has struggled against wing players, specifically against small forwards. They ranked dead last in defensive efficiency against the position this season. So of the top spends relative to their price tag, we view Paul George as the best play and the primary spend that you, sh you should consider on this slate. Paul George is always a player that you want to get in there but now that he's back and shooting 25 times a game yeah that'll work especially on a two-game slate another star that you should consider tonight well it's the star on the opposite team playing paul george in the thunder tonight and that's damian lillard why lillard over westbrook tonight the reason for Lillard over Westbrook is more about salary and overall roster construction than anything else tonight. Uh, Westbrook's salary kind of inflated a little bit. Both guys are priced pretty pretty appropriately. There's not a ton of value to be had on their tags, but it's a little bit easier to build well-rounded rosters with Damian Lillard, knowing that you're going to have to spend up at small forward for one of Paul George or Giannis Antetokounmpo, unless you can squeeze both of those guys in. So we like Damian Lillard a little bit better from a roster construction play. Oklahoma City is a good defensive team in terms of defensive efficiency but they play very fast and so that allows a lot of opportunities this game has a much higher total than the milwaukee indiana game and it's the game that we would primarily like to target so getting one stud kind of from each side with paul george and damian lillard makes a lot of sense to to build the stars part of your lineups fair enough good reason to go with lillard tonight if he's a pivot to westbrook that's all right too the stats will obviously be there one last story we want to get to before the value plays and that's of course Giannis antetokounmpo on a small slate tonight Obviously, you have to bring up Giannis, uh, potentially instead of Paul George. Uh, obviously, you mentioned PG-13, one of your favorite plays on the board. You have to like Giannis as well. Yeah, you have to love Giannis. The, the big question mark with Giannis is just where the minutes are going to be. But the last three games, they've been kind of more back to normal. 33, 32, 34 minutes those last three games. I know Milwaukee has been playing uh, a little bit uh, uh, under underwhelming of late. So this is a good bounce back opportunity at home against Indiana with their 10 point favorites. I do think it's a fine matchup for uh, Giannis, even though Indiana is a, a good defensive team. And I think his ownership will come in lower than Paul George. So I think he's a he's a fine play. And obviously, small forward is just a difficult position to fill on the hole if you can get up to both Giannis and Paul George with a lot of punts it's also a viable approach tonight as well absolutely Giannis the minutes do seem more secure than they were and well we know how good he is when he is on the court and playing these games Giannis Antetokounmpo is certainly someone to consider tonight all right so those are the stars that are on the board for tonight's slate let's get into the value plays here Drew because this is where it's going to be important like everybody knows about Giannis and, and Paul George and, and Damian Lillard but the values are what's tough to come by. And we start in Portland where you'd think the big man you want to play is Yusuf Nurkic, but you're recommending Ennis Cantor. How come? Yeah, Yusuf Nurkic is certainly more likely to outscore Ennis Cantor, but on a per dollar basis, we view Ennis Cantor as a little bit better way to build on this slate. Obviously, you talked about all the studs that we have with Damian Lillard, with Giannis Antetokounmpo, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook. All those guys are going to require a ton of salary. And so the center position is one of those positions that maybe you can get a little bit of salary relief. Ennis Cantor is just 4,500. And on a per minute basis, He's as productive as everybody else on the slate at the center position, with the exception of Yusuf Nurkic, who is slightly ahead of him. If Nurkic gets into foul trouble or, or of any sort against Steven Adams, you could see those minutes tick up for Ennis Cantor. And we think the matchup is a little bit better, uh, more favorable for Ennis Cantor, that he could extend some of his playing time as well, just because he has a big size advantage on Nerlens Noel, who's a very, very good defender, uh, just thin and lanky compared to Cantor's bulk. So we like Cantor as a source of salary relief and kind of roster construction-wise. It just makes sense on this slate. He makes a lot of sense on this slate because he can put up a lot of fantasy points in just not a lot of time on the court. And, and facing a guy like Nerlens Noel, which we assume he will, the points and the rebounds and just a whole lot of fantasy goodness should be there tonight. More fantasy goodness is in Indiana, where Wes Matthews makes a little bit of sense tonight. How come you're going with Matthews? 
Matthews is in a, at another one of these positions where there's not a ton of value to be had, and he's relatively cheap. So he looks like the best source of salary relief at a shooting guard position that, you know, we'd rather spend, let's say, just under 10K for Damian Lillard than spend, you know, up around 7 or 8K for guys like Chris Middleton or CJ McCollum. So just from a roster construction standpoint, it makes a little bit more sense to get some salary relief at shooting guard. And for Wes Matthews, the matchup isn't as bad as you might think on paper. In particular, Milwaukee is a team that is, yes, a very good defense, but they allow a ton of three-point field goal attempts, the most per game in the league. And Wes Matthews is the guy who camps out the three-point line, fires away. So hopefully he gets hot from deep, pays off that cheap price tag. Price tag is cheap enough. The value is going to be there for Wes Matthews. And as Drew mentioned, there's just not that much of it on the board tonight. So you're going to have to take it where you can get it. One last value play that Drew Digmeyer likes tonight, and that is Jeremy Grant with the Thunder. We saw what he could do when Paul George was out. Why do you like him still when Paul George is back? Another one of those positions that's pretty difficult today. Uh, no high-end power forwards to really choose from, and most of the guys that are going to play meaningful minutes on this slate are priced up uh, for the most part. Thaddeus Young is priced appropriately. Al Farouk Aminu is priced appropriately. The Bucks don't really have a lot of power forwards to consider because Giannis kind of plays that position for them, and he's small forward eligible. So we think Jeremy Grant has the best price tag of the group. He does get steals and blocks, which fits the official fantasy scoring. Uh, he's priced reasonably in the mid-fives, and over his last five games, he's averaging 28 FanDuel points per game. So he's coming in in good form as well. We think he's your best value at the power forward position. The value, again, tough to come by with just two games on the slate. You're going to have to get this right in order to win some money tonight. We think Jeremy Grant's one of those guys that if you go with, you'll be very happy. That's going to do it for the daily fantasy part of tonight's two-game slate. When we come back, we'll pick the game. We'll give you the teams to bet on tonight and how you'll win money on that side of things. Drew, we appreciate the time, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, Greg. Good luck tonight. We're taking a break. We'll be back with Joe Ranieri to pick the games right after this. Back with you on the FanDuel Hurry Up, Greg Sussman, now joined by our guy, Joe Ranieri, to pick the games. What's going on, Joe? How are you, my friend? Doing fantastic. And I want to win some money tonight. There's two games on the slate. It's easy to break down, so I would think... And I'm hoping you'll be able to help me do just that. First game, the early one. You can watch it on TNT early tonight. It's the Milwaukee Bucks hosting the Indiana Pacers at 8 o'clock. Bucks are a 10-point favorite at home. Over-under sits at 223. Who do you like? Uh, I got to tell you, the Indiana, it's a tale of uh, home and away with them. They're a different team at home compared to what they are away. They're 4-4 four and four in their last eight. Overall, they're averaging about 108, 109 points per game, and they've done an amazing job once they lost Victor Oladipo, their leading scorer for the season. But it's been Bojan Bogdanovic the entire time along the way, averaging about 18 a game along with two assists. It's all about consistency with Indiana right now. They have it at home. They don't have it away which is why they've been four and four over their last eight they've lost their last five of eight away from home so this is a tough tough ball game from them going into a place where milwaukee they dominate at home they've only lost 11 games all year at home this team knows how to win and unfortunately indiana doesn't know how to win or even cover away from their uh, the comfy confines of their house so i'm gonna say lay the points here go with milwaukee i expect this to be somewhere between 12 to 14 points victory for the Milwaukee Bucks. All right, the Bucks get the job done, according to Joe. That's the direction you're going to want to go in. Take Giannis and the crew against a struggling Pacers team in Milwaukee. All right, up next, we go to the Western Conference Affair, and this one's at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time on TNT. The Portland Trailblazers are at home hosting the Thunder in what should be a better game. Portland comes in as a four-point home favorite, with the over-under sitting at 2.32. Westbrook and George in Portland. What are you thinking, Joe? Well, I think OKC has been hot garbage as of late. We are talking a slump of all sump, and I think it has to do with the fact that Paul George has been hurt. He has not been 100%. He's got that shoulder injury, and I don't blame him for all of the issues there, but it's a different team without a 100% uh, healthy Paul George. In fact, they've been absolutely atrocious against the number two in their last eight. We are looking at uh, a 0-8 team against the number. 0-8. Oklahoma City. It is not good. The Thunder have also gone 2-8 and eight against the spread uh, in their last 10. The Blazers, however, 
seven and three. The Blazers are home and they love being home. Let me tell you, you got two teams moving in totally opposite directions here. I love the Blazers in this position. I love them at home. I love them in the first half laying two. And I also love them full game laying four. I figure it's going to be about 124, 110. Expect a blowout, another blowout here. Portland at home takes care of business against OKC. Another blowout that's two for two in blowouts. Joe confident with the Portland Trailblazers tonight. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up with just two games. Well, we're going to make you some money anyway. Drew gave you the DFS picks. Joe hooked Joe with the gambling picks. You're going to win money on both sides tonight. Joe Ranieri, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it, guys. Good luck. And good luck to everybody watching. We'll be back tomorrow with a full slate of NBA games and all of your daily fantasy picks. For Joe and Drew, I'm Greg. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.